Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Judith Muir from Paul Perrot Dolphin Swims, who is presently one of the many businesses currently affected by the limited extent of dredging that's happening now. What next? Judy Muir, J Judith Muir, please come to the stage. Good afternoon, everybody. It's heartening to see so many people here. I've just come in off the boat showing people the dolphins in Port Phillip Bay. Less than 4% of the world's ocean are considered pristine. 40% of the world's oceans are considered heavily impacted upon. Vecchi, Mr. Wayne Kayla Thompson, was quoted as saying, Port Phillip Bay isn't pristine, get over it. This project should go ahead. I want you, if you see any rubbish on the street, to add to it, not to pick it up. Is that the sort of rationale we're going to use? If it's dirty, dirty it more. I don't think so. In this day and age, people respect that this is the jewel in the crown of Port Phillip. If that's not pristine, it's as close to it as you're going to get in an industrialised city with four million people living around the fringes of it and still be able to swim with wild bottlenose dolphins. Yeah. We have... <laughs> we care a lot about this bay. We've hosted a lot of research for doctoral thesis, a master's thesis, various other people come and study. We've contributed to changing the Wildlife Act to protect dolphins against people like me who exploit them for, in the name of tourism. <laughs> it's true, if you don't look after sustainably what you exploit for your living, you don't have a living. Yeah. That is economic sense. That is a sustainable, ecological, <laughs> economic rationale that should be applied to this. What we're getting is this surface here, this shiny surface, is a bank teller's counter over which to shove money willy-nilly. If you know the cost of something, you've got to know the value of it. We need to understand and get politicians to understand the value of the bay. I've had a few politicians out over the last 22 years that I've been operating and offered to hold a few under. <laughs> they reckon they couldn't help me if I did that. So I didn't think they'd been much good to that point, but you know, we do have good politicians. We do have good politicians. There are some standing here right now. They worked in a bipartisan way to bring in the act that protects dolphins. If we work together, if we put on the table all of the papers to show what are the effects, real, not extrapolate from all this wonderful research that's been done, not extrapolate from that a reason for doing it, but to really look at should we do it, and surely the voices of discontent now are loud enough and far-ranging enough for us to understand, perhaps not us, but for others to understand that this government would be given the greatest applause if they saw fit at this stage to re-evaluate and to have a look very closely at this project and all of the issues that have been raised subsequent to the environmental effects studies and the panel hearings. The There's a challenge for Mr Brumby. I'd like him to come out on the boat. I'd like Garrett to come out on the boat. And I wouldn't hold them under. I would show them... I would show them what they share with the rest of this population. With the dredge working as it is, and we'll continue to work in the southern end of the bay, there's been very little said about the effect on dolphins. In fact, it has been said there will be no long-term effect and we can actually move our business somewhere else and set up somewhere else. This is the home of these Port Phillip Bay dolphins. They're a unique species, isolated, as many dolphin populations are, and they choose to live and breed in this area. They are mostly females, and they have a site attachment to their point of origin. They don't move out, they die out. This study was all brought together under Dr. Peter Hale of the Queensland University. The papers are there. It says that these dolphins cannot be impacted upon. If they lose one breeding dolphin um, a year for four years, we will have none in 25 years. Such is the fragility of this species. They are under protection. They are considered an endangered species. And I think I've got the papers here. They were listed in 2003 with DSE. 
on an alert list. So we do need to look after them. When the uh, dredge operates, they say they'll have a lookout watching for dolphins and they will stop their operations when dolphins approach. We had 20 people out on the boat this morning who wanted to see dolphins desperately. They had paid to see dolphins desperately and they had a big investment in it. We approached the dolphins under the whale watching guidelines that we operate under. Those people could not see the dolphins until we pointed them out. It takes experts to see dolphins. The way they've got it rigged with the dredge is more to do with whales who are very slow moving large creatures compared to dolphins. Yes, you can see a whale from a distance. It disturbs the water. Yes, you can see it under the water because it's a large black shape. This dredge won't shut down for a few dolphins. They won't even see the dolphins. What do they do when they're working 24 hours a day? Keep a lookout in the dark? I don't think so. These dolphins are at risk. They are unique to Port Phillip Bay. They won't move out, they will die out. We have a study, Our Coast, Our Future, eight, $80 million, $8 million program. The, the findings won't be known, and Our Coast, Our Future, listen to the heading, won't be known until the year 2009, and yet we're making a momentous decision on our coast, our future, without finding out the effects of climate change. This project has gone ahead in isolation from the effects of climate change. It hasn't been considered at all in the project, and we know that in Bali, the findings were thus. I'll just read them to you. The Australian Greenhouse Office cites this. Adaptations um, involves judgment about the best strategy in the face of uncertainty about future climate change. A flexible approach is necessary to avoid the dangers of under-adaptation when we don't consider it at all. We've got to avoid that. The Australian Greenhouse Office says so. Over-adaptation, where climate change factors are given too much weight, well, that hasn't been a problem here, or maladaption, where decisions are taken that make an, active, uh, make an activity or a region more vulnerable to climate change. And so it says to stop these faults, we must avoid decisions that constrain future adaptation options. I suggest that this is a decision that's been taken that will indeed not allow us to adapt in the future. Thank you very much for your time.